G'day Groovy Humans and welcome back for another episode. Today we're exploring the topic of grief and we're doing that exploration with the lovely Yvette Tarrant. Now Yvette works as a grief coach but Yvette also has her own grief journey and story that she shares with us today. Now the topic of grief can be quite triggering for some people so if you are sitting in that place where you're not too sure if you're going to be triggered by this conversation and the stories that we share I do ask you to stop and maybe come back at another time when you're ready to continue listening. Now grief can show up in different ways for different people and grief isn't all about the death of a loved one. Grief can be any loss or any change in your life that occurs and this is what we explore today in the episode. I hope you enjoy the conversation today. Sit back, relax, let's get started. Today on the show, we have a special guest, Yvette Tarrant. Uh, hopefully, I've said that correctly. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Yvette. Thank you. And you said it perfectly. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So, just tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you do in the world. Yeah. Okay. So, I am a what's called a grief recovery coach. And so, I support people through their grief journey. And what got me to that space was that my husband passed away from cancer uh, two years ago. And we were together for 24 years and our girls were 12 and 16 when their dad died. So it's been an incredibly difficult journey. However, again, that is what was the space uh, that I am in now. And it's completely changed our life in every way possible. And I feel like now this is part of the journey for me to be able to teach and support other people with what I have learned. Uh, in moving through my own grief. Okay, so you didn't start out obviously wanting to be a grief coach. <laughs> where where do you sort of come from? Yeah, so my background is a uh, sports science nutrition, and many many it feels like many many ago. Um, I worked in the health and fitness industry, and then went in to have my own personal training business, which was um, working with women and doing pre and postnatal, but. I came to realize after doing that for a period of time that it didn't matter what I prescribed to people in terms of exercise and nutrition, it, it just so often didn't make a difference because it was their mindset and their psychology that made the biggest difference. And that led me into life coaching in around 2011, 2012. And so I sort of played around with that and looked at different spaces with that. And at the time when my husband um, was diagnosed and going through his treatment and towards the end before he passed away, I wasn't. I actually stopped working to take care of him at home. And so when he passed away and I guess doing the lessons and um, and just being where I was in my life at that particular moment in time, I just I knew that moving forward I wanted to make sure that I pursued something that was I was passionate about and that I loved and, and that was always going to be coaching and sort of coming back to that. So I spent that first 12 months just, really upskilling and doing lots of extra training. And I was asked a lot last year about going into the grief coaching space and I was very, very resistant. It was, an, it was a no every time I was asked that question because I, and what I realised or what I came to realise was that I wasn't ready to share my story and to tell my story. However, um, that has now changed um, and I have come again to that space of, of knowing that this is part of the journey and and being a coach and understanding mindset and psychology has allowed me to, I guess, come through my own grief in a way that has, um, I guess, allowed me to understand without question that grief is not a life sentence. And culturally, we do grief not well. And that I've now seen firsthand and I see with my clients as well. And, um, and I'm really on a mission to not only support people through their own grief and uh, be able to see what's possible beyond grief, but also to change our conversation around it. Because again, you know, as a society, we do not do it well. And there's so many myths and misconceptions around grief that actually create more suffering and pain for people in their life moving forward. And, you know, that needs to change, you know, because there is life and love and joy and, and just happiness beyond grief and that's I guess the message that I want to be able to share with people. Well that's beautiful it's fantastic thank you for sharing I guess that yeah. journey from where you've come from mm -hmm. where you are now and I guess you know that resistance you may have felt to begin mm -hmm. with in becoming mm -hmm. a grief coach and I guess do you feel like a little bit more aligned like is it 
something like a purpose for you? Oh, without without question, without question. The I feel so uh, aligned and on point with where I'm meant to be. Like for me right now, I truly really believe that life is exactly where it's meant to be because that's where it is. And I know that this is part of my journey moving forward. And if I could share with you, one of the things that my husband and I said when he was diagnosed and we said through going through his treatment, um, you know, this can't be all shit. Like there has to be something good that comes out of this. We have to be better people. We have to live better lives because of this experience. And now I feel like moving forward, I, I'm taking everything, all the crap and, and the pain and the stuff, everything that we've been through as a family, I now get to use that in a positive way to help other people. And so I am absolutely that question exactly where I'm meant to be and, and completely aligned and, and my purpose and passion and mission moving forward is is that, is where I'm at right now. That's fantastic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about grief. What is mm-hmm. grief? And <laughs> how does it, I guess how does it show up in people's lives? Yeah, look, look grief is, uh, you know, in terms of emotional experiences, you know, grief is without question, I guess, the most profound emotion that we experience um, as human beings. And it's so misunderstood, you know, because grief itself is, perfectly normal natural response to any kind of loss or change in our life and before my husband passed away I thought grief was just about death however I have now come to understand that there are many many faces of grief is not just about death again it's about any kind of loss or change that we have in our life and and I think it's really important to understand because there are so many people living their life with unresolved grief which has such a massive negative impact on their life in every area but they don't actually realize that they're experiencing grief because again somebody hasn't died because that's our perception of what grief is um and i think it's really important to understand you know that grief is not just about death and we experience grief for many different reasons in our life and there is too many people that are experiencing grief that don't even recognize that that's what it is yeah, absolutely. Um, I totally mm. agree with that. So mm. you know, some of the things that come to mind for me being in some of the industries I worked in is people mm. losing, losing their jobs yeah. Um, um, yeah. and things like that. And that that's a form of grief that I don't think oh. people uh, understand. I don't realise. Yeah. Absolutely. It's loss of, um, it's loss of career, loss of um, job, loss of um, you know, financial um, stability, loss of um, trust, you know, loss of physical capacity without, within our own, you know, bodies. You know, there are, you know, so many, there are just so many different aspects of grief. You know, it's not as simple as just somebody dying. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, again, sorry, and also touch on that, you know, in terms of, you know, relationships are huge when it comes to grief. And I had a dear friend of mine was going through um, a divorce at the same time after I'd lost my husband. And what I realized you know, was the correlation between the two of our experiences. You know, even though we had different situations, the process and the journey with which we were going through was very similar in many ways because we had both lost this future of what we thought our life was going to be. Um, and so, you know, the loss itself in so many relationships absolutely has a grieving, whether it's separation, whether it's divorce. Um, you know, again, it's not just about the death of somebody. Yeah, absolutely. So are you finding that when, I guess, you are in a state of grief or when people mm-hmm. are in a state of grief, is it hard for them to realise that they're actually there? Mm-hmm. I don't know that. I, I think the, the, I guess the biggest myth we have in our society when it comes to any kind of pain is to avoid it, is to run away from it. And that's the biggest problem when it comes to grief because even though we feel these feelings and feel these emotions, that still, grief is freaking hard. It is hard, it's messy, and it's ugly. And when we feel that that kind of emotion, we are taught to, okay, some of the three biggest myths are we're taught to, you know, be strong and to keep busy and, you know, time heals. But all of those things do nothing but distract ourselves from the way we're feeling. And time, let me tell you, heals nothing. It's, <laughs> it's, it's what we do with our time that breaks the space for healing. Because healing and moving through grief is an active process. It's not a matter of just sitting and waiting for time to pass for us to feel better and so I think the biggest thing you know with experiencing um, grief is understanding you know what those feelings are and they're actually normal and they're actually okay to feel those feelings and the best way to move through our grief 
is to actually allow ourselves a space to feel those feelings. And that's the one thing, the biggest thing, you know, in terms of, you know, in our society and culturally that we do not teach people to do. Mm, yeah. So you, you touched on feelings. Are there mm-hmm. other signs that people should be looking out for to indicate that grief is, is happening in their life? Yeah, look, I guess to clarify first, you know, understanding that grief itself is an incredibly personal journey. Like we all experience grief in different ways. However, there are some some commonalities, if you like, things like um, loss of appetite and not being able to focus and to concentrate, you know, feeling very um, much on a roller coaster with our emotions, like up and down and all over the place and, and not understanding, um, you know, why it is that we're feeling like that. Because also, you know, grief itself comes in waves. It's, it's like this tornado comes through and then you'll be okay for a bit and this other tornado comes through. And, um, you know, and crying, you know, some people cry, some people don't. But, you know, emotionally, just being very emotional without really understanding, you know, what that is. And, and so they're, I guess, some of the common things. And, and I guess it's um, the feeling like you don't know how to feel better feeling like there's something wrong with you, like I'm feeling this way and I don't know how to feel better. I don't know what's wrong with me. And um, and again, it's understanding that, okay, I've been through I've been through a loss or I've been through a change. And like you mentioned before, it might be a loss of a job or, or something that's not generally correlated with grief. Um, but it's really being able to, I guess, be reflective of, okay, what's happening in my life right now? Where are these feelings and emotions coming from? And understanding that what I'm feeling is okay because I think too often, um, you know, we go and get support and help that maybe isn't so helpful in some ways. We may be given medications or things to, I guess, again, distract ourselves from how we're feeling Um, because, again, the distraction is never going to create a space for us to be able to um, move through and be able to heal from whatever we're feeling, if you like. Does that make sense? I'm the answer to question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think we tend to treat the symptoms as mm-hmm. opposed to the root cause. So that's mm-hmm. why you know, we do end up at the doctor or uh-huh. that we are getting, you know, pills or whatever it might be. Absolutely. It may not be the most helpful thing for us. Mm-hmm. Because, again, they create distractions in how we're feeling. And, again, they are telling us, Oh, you're feeling this way. Well, that's actually not okay for you to feel that way. Let me give you some some pills or some medication to try and take that away from you. But we don't want to take it away. Like we need to feel the emotions. It's the only way. Like we have to walk through the fire to get to the other side. And like I said before, it's messy and it's ugly and it's the hardest freaking thing there is to move through it. However, it's it's the only way to get to the other side. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. I love your story. I love that approach and, and I guess that mission you've got behind it all mm-hmm. about moving through it, moving towards it and, and not suppressing it or trying no. to tough it out, is, which is definitely, yes. I think, an Australian thing, like cultural thing. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> without, without question. And if I could offer anything to you, and that, and that is the only way to move through grief is to move with it, not against it. Yeah. We have to go with whatever is showing up for us and you know, be able to sit with it and be okay with it as hard as what it is. Mm. And it's hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, people are in this place and you've talked about let's move towards it. So how mm-hmm. can they do that? Like where can they reach out? Are there places mm-hmm. to go, people to talk to and things like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess the, the the biggest things I would um, suggest is what I've just said before in terms of, you know, allowing ourselves to feel whatever it is we're feeling, like giving ourselves permission to feel whatever it is that we're feeling. Because so often we judge our own selves because we're taking on other people's judgments of us. And, and quite often other people don't like seeing us in pain, so they will try and, um, I guess, tell us, you know, again, back to the myth, keep busy, you know, distract yourself. It's okay, don't be sad. It's like other people, we, other people need to also give us space to feel whatever it is they're feeling. That's one of the biggest things I hear from my clients and, and so many people going through grief, and that is other people's responses to grief. Because not only do we not teach people how to experience grief if they're feeling it themselves, but we don't teach people how to support people in the best way possible when they're going through grief. And there is so many, there's so many shit things, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but... Fine, perfectly <laughs> okay. fine. Um, that, 
that people tell other people going through grief, I don't mean to be shitty things. I don't mean to be saying things that aren't helpful, but they simply are not helpful. But they're, they're just saying what they've been taught or what we've been, I guess, um, told, you know, that we say to people. Um, and the other thing I would suggest is um, very, very strongly is that we ask for help. You know, because what can be really grief itself can be incredibly isolating and feel very lonely, particularly if you're around people that you feel like don't understand. Like it, it can be really, really lonely space. And when that happens, we tend to contract and to isolate ourselves, which is not supportive or helpful to our recovery at all. And so we need to make sure that we are putting our hand up and telling people that we're not okay, we're not coping, and I need help. Um, and being vulnerable around that because um, that's really really important yeah. and um and i guess the other thing that i would um you know say is super important that is just self-care you know it's really easy to not take care of yourself it's really easy not to fill your own cup up and to be depleted in every way possible when we're going through any kind of grief um and so it's really important that we are mindful about taking care of ourselves whether that means you know, nutritionally and and exercising and you know having downtime and you know, doing stuff that fills our cup up going for walks um reading books going down a massage whatever it is that fills our cup up and allows us to feel like we're giving ourselves you know something that makes us feel good is also really important um as well mm, absolutely Again, it's that distraction thing. <laughs> oh, without, exactly. And, and look, and again, when it comes to getting support as well, it, it can come from friends, obviously. But I look to be perfectly honest with you, not everybody, um, not everybody deserves to be in your little bubble. I guess. And when I say deserves to, I mean that you know, not everybody. You don't want to share all of your deep, dark feelings with everybody because most of us don't have a big circle of people, even if it's just one person that you can know that you can just be open and honest with everything about how you're feeling, just one person. Um, and and also from a prof- professional perspective, whether it's you know, coaching, therapy, psychology, whatever it is that you go, um, if you go down that space for or the avenue for support, you know, you don't always come across the first person that actually connects with you, you know. And so I, my advice to people is just keep trying keep trying like go through as many people as you need to to find that person that you can connect with because this is um again a, the most profound emotional experience you know grief is that we go through so we want to make sure that we're connecting with someone that we really feel safe um with and, and we can create a space where we can be completely honest with how we're feeling mm, absolutely i totally agree with that um mm. it may not be that first person it may mm-hmm. be tenth person but you've got to find the right person <laughs> yes it's it's so important because we have to be open and honest with how we're feeling like we we have to have those conversations with people so i guess at at a groovy and light life the podcast we we talk a lot about living in alignment uh, mm-hmm. to our true self yeah how do you mm-hmm. feel that working with our grief understanding it better and moving towards it as opposed to away from it can mm-hmm. help us live in alignment to our true self yeah because here's the thing, like unresolved grief has a massive negative impact on us. Uh, and what I mean by that is that it creates, I guess, anger and sadness and frustration that just stacks one on top of the other, top of the other. And it changes who we are as people. And when we uh, allow ourselves to, I guess, be in that space rather than allow ourselves to move through the grief, um, we really, we really get out of alignment with who we really are. And when we're able to, again, experience grief as a normal, natural response to any kind of loss or change, understanding that moving through that process and that journey can actually have great gifts and blessings and insights on the other side that allow us to just grow and evolve into, I guess, and connect more with our own truth and what our own um, purpose is, you know, in our own life. And, um you know, I truly believe that, you know, that which our soul requires for its greatest evolution is the thing that will create the greatest resistance for us. Mm. And so when we're, when we're feeling that resistance to things, those are the things that we need to lean into because those things are going to allow us to have the greatest growth and the greatest um, learnings and the greatest evolu- evolution, I, I guess, of who we are as a human being and, you know, connecting with our soul's purpose 
I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and again, it's getting get that to that space that, you know, life, there's duality to everything in life, meaning there is good, bad, you know, happy, sad. There are all, there's just always duality. And we will find whatever it is we're looking for. So if we want, if we want to keep focusing on the, the sadness and the crappy stuff and how hard things are, that's exactly what we're going to find. And so, you know, it, it is a journey working through that, and that's the gift of, of being able to move through the grief. Because on the other side of it, we we do get to see the blessings and the gifts. And mm. even my husband is in the hardest thing I've ever had to go through, and to have my, my girls not have their dad with them anymore is just is devastating. However, on the other side. Uh, what I've been able to see now is, is rather than living the pain of it, I've been able to be truly grateful and see the blessings and the gifts and the lessons that lessons of what we went through and who he was as a man and the gifts that he gave us that we now get to move forward in our life and, and have those and capture those and, and have those with us, you know, moving forward for as long as what we are here for. And so, you know, there are gifts and blessings in everything. We can't always see them, at, you know, when we're stuck in the trenches and the midst and the depths of our pain and our grief and our trauma. But once we allow ourselves to move through that, that is what's, you know, in the light on the other side of the darkness, if you like. Mm, absolutely. So you've just touched on it um, just now is, is, I guess, what is possible beyond grief for people? Yeah, look, there is, without question, there is joy and there's happiness and there's love and there is a, I guess, a, a grace and an ease and a flow to life that does not feel like that when you're in the midst of grief, that is for sure. But there is, for me personally, like I've been able to come to a space where I know without question that my life is exactly where it's meant to be because that's where it is. And one of the greatest lessons I've had is about pain and suffering and and how we create our own suffering. And when we focus our time and our energy on things that we have no control over, which so many of us do, particularly when we're in grief, we want the life that we was, you know, in our mind that we're supposed to have. We want to, we, we focus on what we've lost and what's been taken away. And when we understand that those things are never actually ours to start with, they're always a fantasy and illusion. Like the only moment we have for sure is right now, this moment here and also the time we've had before that. And so coming to realizations like that um, and knowing that, as I said, life is exactly where it's meant to be. And I have complete 100% faith and trust in the universe that whatever's put in front of me is mine to have for whatever reason. There is just an acceptance. And one of my favorite words in this area is acceptance because mm -hmm. when we can accept what is, yep. it's, a, it's a game changer for everything in our life. And we just, rather than resisting what comes to us, we're able to accept it, be able to work with it, and take it for the lessons and the gifts and learnings that, that it's there for. Um, and so, being able to change our perception around that is is massive. Like it changes everything. It changes how we show up in the world and how we perceive everything that's in the world that comes to us. Yeah, absolutely. And another big one I see is um, around having, I guess, um, like I said, perceptions. But attachments, mm -hmm. attachments to things, mm -hmm. people, yes. or to the life that we wanted, or something like that, and yes. being able to surrender that and mm -hmm. say, yep. actually, it's okay. <laughs> yes, but without question, and that was definitely one of my biggest lessons. Once I realised that I was creating my own suffering because my focus was on, okay, what's been taken away, what's been, what we've lost. But the truth is. Yes, we plan for our future and how we want our life to be, but when we do that, we, it then becomes an expectation. And then when it becomes an expectation and life doesn't turn out like that, we think we've lost it and it's been taken away, but that's a fantasy. Like that was never our life to start with. It was always an illusion and a fantasy in, in our mind. And, and when we stay focused on that future-paced thinking that isn't even real, we completely miss the right now and we completely filter out all, like for me personally, completely filter out the 24 years that we had together, you know, that was the gift. So rather than having having anything taken away, it was the opposite. Like mm. we were given, like I was given 24 years with this man. That in itself is a gift. So I haven't had anything taken away. I was given that. So it's changing that whole perspective about how we see things and being able to come back to, to gratitude for everything that is rather than focusing on what we think we've lost and what's been taken away. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. 
Mm. So if you could give somebody out there today just one piece of advice or a lesson that you've learned, what would it be? Mm. Is allow yourself to feel whatever yeah. it is you are feeling. I mean, I um, look at it, and I guess because I um, sort of came out of that space of taking care of my husband um, at home and, you know, and after he'd passed away, you, you're sort of still in that take care of everything mode. And, and because my, my girls had been, obviously they had been through a lot and they had seen a lot and I felt like if they saw me not coping, then, man, they are going to think, what hope is there? Now mum's now mom's not coping. Um, and I, I can only hold that up for so long. So I got to the point where I just, I couldn't, I had to allow myself to feel and be open and honest. And, and the other, you know, if you have kids, you know, it's really important to understand that it's not our job to take pain away from our kids. Mm-hmm. It's, our, it's our job to show our kids how to feel their pain and to know that it's okay. And the way we do that is to sit with them and show them, you know, how we feel our own pain as well. And so, um, and, and like I said, it's messy and it's ugly, but but it's being able to sit in the discomfort and the, the complete, utter messiness that is grief and pain and just be able to sit in it and uh, be okay with it for the time that it takes and, you know, because it's the feeling of it that allows us to let it go and to be able to sort of take that one step. I was like a client last night, you know, it's, is every day that we allow ourselves to feel whatever it is we're feeling is a day that we get closer to actually getting to the light because, you know, it's it's a feeling um, of the emotions and allowing yourself to fully express them and to experience them that allows us to let them go and to be able to take that step forward. Mm, absolutely. Mm. And for those people out there that may have somebody grieving in their life and they mm. want to support them, what sort of advice can you give them? Uh, yeah, this is a huge one. This is one of the, as I said before, this is one of the biggest things that I have um, people tell me when it comes to their grief journey. And the biggest gift that we can give anybody that's going through grief is to allow them to, the space to feel exactly what it is they're feeling without trying to fix it, without trying to change it, without trying to distract them from it. Just allow them to feel whatever it is they're feeling. And because, again, so often I hear that you know, people that are experiencing grief, people stop calling, people stop coming to visit. Mm, yes. Be- because people don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And people don't want to see somebody always in grief. They don't want to keep talking about it. And this is just, then creates the isolation as well because the people going through the grief, they start to feel judged. Mm. And so they stop, they stop talking to people about how they're feeling. And as someone who's supporting someone going through grief, it's not our job to fix it. No. It's, not our, it's not our job to change it. It's our job just to be there, just to be in that space with them and support them in any way that we can. And and I think the other thing as well is that so often we, we do want to help. Um, and, you know, when you're in the midst of your and the depths of your grief and, and your trauma, that you, whatever it is that you're experiencing, it feels like you've got the way the world in your shoulder. So when someone says to you, Oh, what do you, what can I do for you? What do you, it feels like just the straw that broke the camel's back. It feels like one more thing I've got to think about. Now I've got to tell you what you can do for me. And so I, I say to people, look, don't ask, just do something. Cook them a meal, you know, mow their lawn, take the kids to and from school, just do something for somebody um, rather than be asking them what you can do. And again, just allowing them the space to, um, to feel and be whatever it is that they need to without having to fix it or to change it. Yeah, and not having that, like you said, that judgment. Um, mm-hmm. and exactly. Because people, people can pick up on that uncomfortableness. <laughs> oh, my God, without question. And here's the thing. There are, there, are so many, um, there are so many people out there giving tips and advice about how to – people that are obviously going through grief that have no idea because they haven't even been through that experience themselves. Uh, but they're doing it with the intention of thinking they're being helpful. And one thing I know to be true is that whatever, and if we just talk about death, for example, whatever you think it's going to be like, nothing can prepare you for the finality of death. Mm-hmm. Like nothing can. Whatever you imagine somebody is going through, I can assure you it's not even close to what their experience actually is. Yeah. Um, and even the husband with the cancer, obviously we knew what the outcome was going to be. But nothing 
prepared me for what it was actually like after he had passed away. And so don't assume that you know what people are going through. And again, there is no other thing people like to do is, um, so I keep adding things in here, but um, Perfect. The, the other thing that people like to do is they like to compare their grief. There is no comparison when it comes to grief. Like everybody, everybody has a story um, and experience, you know, relative to their own life experience. And, you know, there is no comparison to grief. And even when it comes to, um, you know, me speaking to other women that have lost their, lost their husbands, Never would I say to somebody, I know how you feel, because I don't know how you feel. Every relationship is unique. Every grief experience is unique. And so, you know, there is no comparison saying, well, my grief's worse than yours or my experience was worse than yours. Like, that's crap. Like, just there is no comparison. And so just allow people the space to be whatever it is that they are in um, without um, having their own judgments and thoughts and opinions about what it is and what it should be and what it should look like. Because, you know, people, people are like, you know, the things that people get told, seriously, oh, haven't you got over it? I, I'm too over it now. Are, are you better now? Like, yeah. haven't, you, haven't you moved on? You know, yep. oh, don't, there's, there's plenty more men in the sea. Oh, you're so young. You'll find somebody else. Like, oh, this, well, this, yeah. This, this, this is so much stuff that isn't necessary. Um, people think they're being helpful, but they are not. Um, so it's best that we just don't um, just be there. Just be there. Yeah, just mm-hmm. hold that space for the the people yes. going through it, and and that's all yep. you need to do. <laughs> it, that's all you need to do. And if somebody's crying, allow them to cry. Exactly. Like it's it's okay to be crying because so often we want to hug someone and we give them a tissue, but we interrupt the emotion when we do that. We're like telling somebody, okay, I've had enough now. I don't want to see you crying anymore. Here, have a tissue. Be quiet. Stop. <laughs> yeah. um, just simple things like that. Just if someone's crying, just leave them be to cry. When I say leave them be, be with them. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> walk away. Um, walk away. But um, just allow people the space to feel whatever it is they're feeling because you do not know how they feel. You don't have to know how they feel. You don't have to fix it. Um, they're on their own journey and whatever that looks like is what it will look like. And to move through it, they need to feel it. Mm, absolutely. I'll just share an example that I had mm-hmm. last weekend. Um, I was with a friend who was talking about, you know, what she wanted in life and we were just having breakfast together and the next minute she sort of started crying mm-hmm. and she goes, oh my God, I'm being a sook. And I said, no way. Mm-hmm. I said, you have just realized that your life isn't what it, what you want it to be. And you've actually found that thing that lights you up and makes mm-hmm. you feel happy. Yeah. So let, let the tears come. You know, she wanted to stop it and she was calling mm-hmm. herself a sook and all this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, no, no. That's I exactly, love that. Just let it come, you know. Exactly. And she's calling herself a sook, which really isn't even her own judgment. It's just other people's judgment on her that she's taken on as her own. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's really powerful. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. So I love how you how the response you had to her. Mm, absolutely so mm. thank you for being on the show today oh, my, my pleasure my absolute pleasure do you have any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with us today ah look my final words of wisdom on grief is just is just for people to understand that there's nothing wrong with it like grief is a normal natural response again to any kind of loss or change and if that's what you are feeling then allow yourself to feel it you know, wholly and fully, and like I said, it's messy and it's ugly, and to make sure that you reach out for support if you need it. You give yourself permission to feel whatever it is you're feeling and that you take care of you, you know, in the process. And if you're supporting somebody who's going through the grief, again, just allow them a space just to feel whatever it is they're feeling and to be whatever it is they're feeling, be whatever it is they need to be. And, you know, to also understand that, as I mentioned before, the only way through grief is to move with it and not against it. You know, the, the greater resistance that we create towards how we feel, the longer it's going to take us to be able to move through those emotions and to be able to move through the grief itself. So just let it be whatever it will be and there's nothing wrong with us. Like we are designed to feel. That's just, that's just the way it is. And grief and pain is a part of life, just like joy and happiness is. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yvette. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to sort of spread the message and the word. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you receive some valuable information, not only around how grief appears in our lives and how grief is not just about the death of a loved one or the loss of a loved one, 
and that it can show up in many different ways. And for those of you who have somebody in your life who you would like to support through grief, I hope you learned some valuable information to help you show up as the best person you can be for them. If you would like to get in touch with Yvette and learn about all the amazing stuff she does in the world, head over to sagacityrising.com forward slash A-G-E-L 014. And if you'd like to continue this conversation, head into the grooviest tribe on the planet, tribe.agroovyenlightenedlife.com. Hope to see you there. Thank you for listening and tuning in today. And hope to catch you on the next one. Bye out.